Welcome back to DXB Today. Now, the gastronomy industry in Dubai is both diverse and exciting and is a major pull for Dubai's tourism strategy. And our next guest is here to tell us just that. She is a driving force in the evolution of Dubai's F&B hospitality industries. Our next guest is a public speaker and a chief troubleshooter for the leisure sector here in the UAE. Please welcome to DXB Today Studios, Peggy Lee. Peggy, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for today. having me. Show. Very excited. It's all about food and it's just making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was reading the numbers, something that particularly caught my attention is that according to DET, Dubai has over 13,000 food yes. and beverage outlets. And, you know, for us locals, it's, it's an absolute treat. But I want to talk a little bit more about the reality of it. Although it's great that so many brands are choosing to bring their concept here to Dubai, how many of these businesses actually stay alive? I think we need to look across the board is when you look at this number of 13,000 is staggering, but you have your corner carrot chai person to the ones that are making the bread to all the fine dining glitz and glam that we see and all the celebrity chef coming in. We look at it, every one have a different pocket size, but ultimately speaking, I look at it is truly in the game of survival of the fittest mm -hmm. and survival of the fittest is not only to do with the business accolade is about the flavor of the cuisine and also looking at the way of choosing the produce because with the international logistics it's hard to get produce that truly authentically depict who you are and how you want to represent yourself and obviously there is a lot of different things coming in from DET bringing in gastronomy tourism now how gastronomy tourism bring in that additional GDP to the town is a very exciting topic. Now, Peggy, when, when I'm on my travels and I meet people and I tell them that I live in uh, the United Arab Emirates, they're like, why should we visit? What is there? And obviously there's so many things, but one of the things is definitely food because it's one of the few places where you can get good meals from almost every single culture in the world. Uh, we love it, we know it's delicious, but does it actually contribute to the UAE's GDP? Is it really good for business? I think it is, so we have to look at it, how the way, when every time I explain, um, food is a attainable luxury. And what I meant by attainable luxury is, you're happy celebration, you go eat. You're sad, you go eat. You're bored, you go eat. So therefore, there is always a pocket size for something. Like for example, I'm a busy mom running around after school, my son would say, mommy, I'm famished. So you being the first person, okay, scramble. Where's the closest place to find them food? Or when you're out having friends coming in town, where do you want to bring them to? So there's always a topic to go to. And sometimes when you look at it from that genre, you don't necessarily look at the pocket size. And that's when I meant by the attainable luxury and that offers a different dynamic of spending. Now we're talking, uh... <laughs> We're talking about the restaurants and their effect on the UAE and its economy. I want to shift the focus a little bit. For restaurants that now want to move to the UAE, open a branch here uh, in Dubai, there's a lot of competition out there. Very, very stressful. What, how can they set themselves apart, guarantee a little bit of success? What kind of advice do you have for them? I think it's very much looking at diving deep within yourself. Is it a passion project? Is it something that you think, well, my friend said I cook very well, let me set up a restaurant. <laughs> and then there is the ones that who are coming in that we are bigger, better, stronger, we will conquer the market. So there is those ones. So what I'm always said is set your course properly in that extent is how much your pocket will stretch you, how much you stretch yourself. You have to understand when we're talking about 13,000 FMB, there's a lot of people's livelihood is behind there. There are people at home that require that support. And you as an employer needs to understand how far and how good your brand is to keep this business alive so that you keep people's family alive. Uh, actually, I have a question for you uh, when it comes to the restaurant and uh, uh, 13,000 as per DAD, um, uh, we recorded already. What do you think next five years in UAE could be with the restaurant? Do you think the, the numbers going to be uh, more than, definitely going to be more than this, but do we are going to expect all new grow business to just uh, have a chance to come to this food industry or 
or I, least pertain to the rest normal restaurants? I think the number will definitely grow, but with all the trajectory we look at is we will see there are more and more new restaurants coming out in different Emirates. Because of course now everyone all focus in Dubai, but Abu Dhabi is upcoming. We've seen a lot of interesting uh, infrastructure happening in Ras Al Khaimah and various others. And those were bringing in a different level of excitement. Even myself, I love going down to Dibra. And then you go there, hey, you scuba dive, and then afterward, where do you go and have your catch? How or who is gonna cook your catch? You're not gonna you know, drive all the way back three hours to then wait for the crab to go home and eat. Mm -hmm. So you want to have it there and there fresh. And how would that then paint the different economic landscape at those locations, those are the interesting conversations to have. Now, Peggy, before we let you go, because for the audiences out there watching, wondering, well, I wonder where she likes to go on the weekend and eat. Got a few favorite restaurants that you want to share with the world? Uh, well, I personally come from uh, Hong Kong, so obviously international city is the treasure trove that everyone keeps asking me. Auntie Pegs, what should we try? What are the new things to go to? And every time you go in there, is like a um, food odyssey because one day you will find Afghan food in one corner. The other day we find North Korean, which is the most random thing happen. Mm. And then all oh, then next day is we see this hybrid of a Northern Chinese Kazakh uh, barbecue. <laughs> Chinese Kazakh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes. So and then so that's one of the places. Then the other one is. Um, is kind of testing my uh, Scoville uh, meter of the entering the dungeon of the Chad Bazaars at Mina Bazaar and all these other interesting places. Um, I, as I said, I'm yet to really find some very exciting food trail to go to which uh, my dear friend Avra from Frying Pan, she's been working so hard to find something. I was just going to recommend her yeah. to you. Yeah. So, so her and I is cooking something very fun that she's like, right, we need one of those Auntie Peggy international trail. So like, watch the space, watch the space. You will watch the space. Peggy, thank you so much thank for coming you. on our thank show you. and for your invaluable insight. Thank you.